I cheated on that wheelie, it was a foot down wheelie, I was skiing. So sitting over the rear wheel like that, basically you're sitting right over the rear shock. It, it makes it kind of a funky little ride. I mean it's got so much weight on the back tire, it's really got too much rear grip. And uh, yeah, so with these handlebars so close together too, it, you don't have a lot of leverage when you turn, so it, it's really like over responsive. That was good. It's over responsive. And honestly, I've never felt comfortable on this bike. It's not a it, it's not balanced well. So while the bike is amazingly cool and vintage and like just I insanely collectible at this point too, um it's one of those things where it's a it's a vintage ride. It's a it's not something that's comfortable to ride. Um, because of the the riding style of it so uh, I'll never ever get rid of this bike but I certainly wouldn't put a new rider on it because I've never felt comfortable on it because of that steering and where you sit and that backrest that, that's not an OEM thing I don't even know where that came from but I tend to, to use that backrest for myself and that's like the worst thing because now I'm almost sitting directly over the rear tire and it's even less responsive. So what I tend to do is put Renin back here, squeeze in back there, and then I'll sit up front a little bit and uh, that'll make it a little bit more responsive or a little bit, it, it'll balance it better and make for a better ride. And um, you know, it's, uh, it's still really cool though. So uh, it, as funny as it sounds, this was a bike for beginners to pick up back in the 70s and put on the, put on the back of the RV or or the station wagon. So the bike was essentially created to be a uh, throw it in the back of your car or back of the RV bike so these handlebars kind of twist down and fold down so you can stow it away. And I believe my parents had a rack that went on the front of their van. It was a bumper mount and they put the thing up on the bumper and uh, it was it was funny to see these things on the front of bumpers, but that was that was the style. So awesome bike, but uh, I'll shake it down for you with a few fast laps here, and uh, it, this might get a little sketchy because, like I said, this bike is sketchy to begin with. So doing it on a track is a little bit weird. Big bottom out out of the front forks. <laughs> These things don't, they're not oil, even oil filled, they're just springs. So, wall jump. <laughs> Thing is so steep coming down. The wood section, yump. <laughs> the ditch, I hate this part. And our little messy sand kicker. Take the inside berm this time. Running's good. Takes some muscle to get around there with the handlebars this close. Let's see what he wants. Yeah. What? Okay. Let's give me a challenge. Let's see what this four and a half year old's challenge is for me. It's always fun. He sets me up for disaster. What do you want me to do? Probably go over that other side. The other side? Okay. 
that's actually a pretty reasonable request. Go up the uncharted territory. You ready? Go! <laughs> well, let's see. He likes to try to one-up me. Let's see if he'll do it. I wouldn't doubt if he takes a little spill. We'll get behind him for sport. Yeah! <laughs> nice job! <laughs> I can tell I'm going to have a problem with this kid throughout his growing up period. What? That was awesome! Yeah, yeah do it again! This kid's going to challenge me and then I'll challenge him back as he starts riding bigger bikes and then we're both going to get hurt. So the CT70 runs so good now and uh, it's so sketchy though to, to ride hard. You know, after riding Groms. Ah, oh, you sunk! He sunk. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Florida sugar sand traps you like tar. So to ride this thing hard is totally not the mo. That's the uh, that's what dirt bikes are for really. But as a trail bike, I mean it's trail seventy. Oh, he's totally sank now. So as a trail bike, I think it does pretty good with the big fat tires. <laughs> he wants me to stay up here. So growing up the bike in New York, you know, seeing my dad basically struggle with getting it to run right all the time, and uh, going up the hills there, it's one of those things where. If you're on a road, the hills will bog the bike down. But if you're going up something like this, you pop it in first gear, and uh, it'll it'll climb up almost anything. So we see that it climbs up this pretty easy, and probably can't see it on the GoPro. It's a pretty steep little hill. You think I can go up the back? Let's try it. I'll show you. We'll see how this thing climbs. I don't have much tread in my tires anymore. These tires, I think, are original 1970s tires, too, so pretty good testament. The tubes probably can't be too much newer. Oh, I did it! So, I mean, it's just an amazing testament to Honda on uh, how well these bikes preserve and when kept in an environment where they're not going to rust out surprisingly in a little shed in upstate new york the uh the bike didn't rust out it's got some surface rust on it and a little bit of oxidation but not much so i mean my honda affliction and love for the brand is uh not only because i think they make great bikes but just the uh, longevity and quality, mostly attributed to this bike and my ATCs. <laughs> I mean, with some basic tune-up, I got this thing running right. No engine work at all. So overall, the CT70 is uh, it's a great bike. Honda made it for uh, basically every day all around sort of shenanigans I mean it's not one specific purpose of bike I mean you can uh, go up to the mountains with it and you can uh, go up trails uh, let's say you can go on the road with it some of these were street legal this one was street legal it had a license plate on it still and uh, it'll go about 40 miles an hour 45 I guess there's only three gears so it uh, really doesn't have much potential on the top end but it's more of like a little climbing bike like a little you know hill hill climber uh on first gear second gear is you know so much wider that uh you can't really do much second gear like i'm in second gear right now and so it kind of slips the clutch a little bit but you, know, you go in first gear and it slips a little bit but then starts pulling so one more time through the puddle. All right, let's go. So with that, I think we're gonna gonna sign off here. We're heading back home. It's July 4th, 
it's insanely hot so we're gonna go cool off had a good day of riding ct70 is one of those ride all day kind of bikes this one leaks a little bit of oil so gotta it's the only thing i really have to check on it just make sure the oil is uh at a decent level and it's pretty good on gas i mean just a fun all-around bike and if you end up seeing these things for less than a thousand dollars you should really start looking at them uh if you see one around 500 bucks that actually runs grab it uh no questions asked um i mean you could basically reload these motors for less than 100 bucks as far as pistons rings and stuff like that goes so great collector's bike and uh one that i'll definitely hang on to forever probably give to this rascal when i'm too old for it so um yeah i hope you enjoyed the uh the ride the shakedown the uh the story and uh we'll do it on the z50 next and uh that's one of my favorite bikes so we'll see you next time